Hey homeschoolers, I'm Melissa Webb, former full-time classroom teacher and homeschool mom turned full-time business CEO and encourager to homeschool families everywhere. I am determined and dedicated to helping you in this journey that you're on. Yes, I wanna give you sound, educational, practical tips and advice, at the same time making sure that you're enjoying the family journey that you are on. So if you are looking for a place to be encouraged and inspired, you have found the perfect podcast. Homeschooling is a work of heart is truly the perfect place to start. So welcome. Let's jump in. Hello, friends. How are you? I hope everybody is doing fabulously well. I want to talk to you about writing a little bit. I'm wondering what your favorite kind of writing is. I would say for a lot of people, we would all agree that narrative writing is one of the best kinds of writing because its purpose is to entertain. And who doesn't love to be entertained, right? I love a good story. And I imagine you love a good story too. This week, I'm about two thirds the way through a book by Jodi Picoult. It somehow got past me. I've read a lot of her books. I love how she writes. She does so much research behind her writing that oh, she just draws me in. Uh, but this book that I'm reading right now, it's at least a decade old. It's called The Storyteller. Um, it's a present day story that offers flashbacks, um, this parallel story that's happening during the Holocaust. It's in a nutshell about scars, both physical scars and emotional scars. And I think it's a gripping book. Uh, The main character, Sage, is really struggling in her life. And we go on this journey with her. And I'm guessing that probably because of this book that I'm reading, that I have it on my heart to offer encouragement this week. I thought about it and then I thought, no, I'm not going to do a podcast on that. And then I felt it tug on my heartstrings again that I don't know who is supposed to hear what's on my heart, but I have this confidence that it's going to be heard clearly by the person that it's intended for. So I was thinking as I was really getting into this character, Sage, how we all become adults who are the way we are because of whatever stems from previous experiences in our life, right? For example, like this could come from people and places that that filled your childhood and teenage days. Uh, It could be societal pressures that promote unrealistic expectations for us on how we look or how we act, or even the ways we demonstrate that we are successful people. There's also this um, comparison critic within all of us that can get us feeling as if we're inferior in any way, all the ways. I mean, our imagination can just get carried away. And it's a lot. Being a human, I think, can be very hard at times and it gets harder in some ways as we get older. It's easy to get down on ourselves and to get down on others, but from my experience, we mostly get really down on ourselves. And I think it's supposed to happen this way because it happens this way. (laughs) It's funny because I was thinking about a Bible verse that comes to mind. It's from the book of Romans and it's about suffering. And it's the one that says that suffering produces perseverance and perseverance improves character. And improved character instills hope and hope never disappoints. And I think that if this concept of persevering as we suffer If this concept was on the hearts and minds of people two millennia ago, 
it's probably fair to say it's here to stay. The fight that we have is to stay strong and to stay hopeful. That's what I get from that. And staying strong and staying hopeful are very positive thoughts, but they do require action. And so what I wanted to offer this week is an idea. It's a thought. You can take it or leave it. But if it's normal that we are going to get down on ourselves, why not make sure that we spend just as much of our time and give our attention to also dreaming about what's so awesomely possible. And I wanna let you know, I, I'm not saying not to feel the feelings, I'm all in for feeling the feelings. I wouldn't say there's anything wrong with from time to time feeling discouraged and worried and even inadequate, but what I'm saying is, what about the other half of the time? Can we also give ourselves the gift of feeling encouraged and fearless and equipped? Have you ever stopped to think about how long you have been so smart? This is what I have been thinking about this week. You were born smart, instinctually smart. I mean from infancy. Since you were an itty bitty baby, you've been smart. I've been smart. And I want to just think about that for us. And whether this is something that lands with you, or you may even want to share with a child who is struggling and feeling that he or she is not up to par, to just remember we were born smart. We knew how to cry, to signal hunger or discomfort from a wet diaper, or maybe just to get some attention. We learned right away how to recognize familiar faces and to even smile at those who gave us comfort and security. Before we were even maybe between, I don't know, age one and two, only one to two years on the earth, and we were already crawling, walking, and even talking in simple words and sentences. That's pretty smart. By the time kids are three, that's when they start putting simple puzzles together and they can get those round pegs into the round holes. No problem, but that's problem solving. And you're little when that starts to happen. I mean, by the time we start school, we now have moved on to more advanced emotions of caring and and feelings of empathy for other people. I mean, it's so smart. We're so smart. And for so many reasons, legitimate reasons, adults tend to sell themselves short. Kids have higher (laughs) self-esteem than most adults I know. Why is that? I think because we spend a lot of time thinking about where we fall short. And unfortunately, we can end up spending an exorbitant amount of time disregarding just how smart we are innately and the talents that we just have. And I want to make sure that this is not something that you find yourself doing for more hours of the day or days of the week than you should. I want you to remember your innate capabilities. And that's what I feel I'm supposed to tell someone today. There is immense potential within you. I just know it. Whatever it is that you want to do, that inner thing that's just inside of you, and I don't know what it is. I don't know if you're homeschooling for the first time this year or you're going on your 10th year, or maybe you've had this idea of taking your hobby and creating an Etsy account, but you're doubting yourself, or or maybe starting a different kind of business, or applying for a dream job, or writing a book. 
I know so many people who are like, I really want to write a book. But they spend more time thinking they can't instead of balancing that with as much time, if not more, than believing they can. So I want you to believe you can. That's what this whole episode is about. (laughs) Believe in you. Maybe enough people are not telling you that they believe in you, but I do. I think humans are amazing. I think you're amazing. And so even if you're only going to believe it 50% of the time, if you're like, sometimes I believe that, I do. Okay, that's realistic. I get that. I don't think it's realistic to think we can believe it 100% of the time. But even if you only believe it half of the time, my hope is that you do and that you intentionally recognize and embrace your inherent strengths. I hope you step out. I hope you're brave. And I hope that you live the life you've always dreamed of living. I want you to imagine just for a minute that Jodi Picoult is interviewing you. She wants to write a story of your life and she's got to research all the things. I will tell you this story about Sage, oh, it's story worthy. It truly is story worthy. It's not perfect, but I think that's what can make life so interesting. So don't go out there and live a perfect life. Live a story worthy life. Acknowledge what's not so great, but embrace the fact that you were born smart and you're only getting better. Right on, my friend. Well, thanks so much for tuning in and listening this week. Hey, if this was something that you found valuable, don't forget you want to subscribe or follow so that every time a new episode is dropped, you'll be the first to know. And hey, before you go, if you are looking to get some of this academic writing under your belt and outsourced so that it's one less thing freeing you up to enjoy more time with your family, hey, you're going to want to head over to Write on Web. Dot com to see what kinds of resources and materials I have available for you. I will look forward to seeing you there and I will look forward to seeing you here in our next episode. Right on!